centipedes. What's the difference? You know, from their names, it might seem like the main difference between centipedes and millipedes is just their leg count. But actually, that's not so. There's much more to these creepy crawlies than meets the eye, or, uh, the ground. Centipedes and millipedes do have some similarities. Both have way too many legs for anyone's comfort, honestly. But more importantly, they have distinct differences that can be pretty helpful to know. If you're enjoying this leggy showdown, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your favorite fact about millipedes or centipedes. We'd love to hear what surprises you most. Similarities between millipedes and centipedes. So, collectively, centipedes and millipedes belong to the subphylum Myriapoda in the phylum Arthropoda. In other words, they aren't insects, but terrestrial arthropods. And, kind of surprisingly, they're actually more closely related to shrimp than to beetles or butterflies. Both live pretty much throughout the world except for the polar regions, but they're more common in the tropics where they're likely to find the moist environments they need. As for where they hang out, the space under an old log, a pile of leaf litter, or just soil suits them just fine. Both are more active at night, too. Aside from being, well, a little greedy when legs were handed out, they also share attributes like having antennae, segmented bodies, and even their breathing mechanism. Centipedes and millipedes respire through these tiny holes in the sides of their bodies called spiracles. Plus, they have pretty poor vision. In fact, some centipedes have no eyes at all. How many legs do they actually have? So even though their names include pede, which is Latin for feet, centipedes, and millipedes each have different arrangements and numbers of limbs. Like others in the class Kilopoda, centipedes are segmented animals with one pair of legs per segment. But despite their name, their number of legs actually ranges from about 20 to 300, and they're placed so that they stick out from the sides of the animal's body. Some species' legs are shorter and pointy, while others are long and willowy, almost like overexcited hairs. Millipedes on the other leg, pun intended, are in the class Diplopoda. They have two sets of legs per segment, except for the segments near the head, which have only one set. And they don't actually have a thousand legs like their name suggests. It's more like anywhere from 34 to 400 legs, which are positioned on the underside of the body and let them march in a neat, jaunty line. The exception to that range is the female Elacme plenipes millipede, which was dubbed the leggiest animal known on earth in the journal Zookies. This 1.2-inch-long Central California girl can actually sport up to 750 legs. The largest and smallest peds on Earth, centipedes and millipedes, show, um, just huge ranges of size among species. The smallest centipede species in the world, with the Guinness World Record to prove it, is Hoffman's dwarf centipede, Nanarup Hoffmani, and it measures less than half an inch long. It was actually discovered in New York City's Central Park back in 2002. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, the largest centipede, the Amazonian giant centipede, Scolopendra gigantea, can grow up to a foot long. As for millipedes, duff millipedes, genus Polyxenus, are among the tiniest of their class, measuring only about a millimeter long, or 0.03 inches. The largest species is the 13-inch African giant millipede, Archispira streptis gigas. Dramatically different diets set centipedes and millipedes apart. Centipedes are carnivores and, uh, eat insects and other small arthropods like spiders. They kill their prey with a pair of modified legs under their head that act like fangs to inject venom. Larger species can take down larger prey. The 8-inch Chinese red-headed centipede, Scolopendra subspinipes mutilans, releases venom that can kill a mouse 15 times its size in under a minute. Millipedes, on the other hand, are pretty gentle detritivores, feasting on dead plant matter and insects on the forest floor. According to the Field Museum, Forests would be, like, completely choked with rotting leaves and woody plants if it weren't for millipedes eating and then excreting the nutrients back into the world. Putting up defenses is, well, essential for survival. Centipedes move quickly and may even be able to outrun their opponent. If they're caught by a predator, centipedes will puncture or scratch their attacker. They won't do much damage to a human, but their scratches may cause itching and swelling that can last up to 48 hours. Larger species, like the aforementioned Chinese red-headed centipede, can inflict an extremely painful scratch that could actually require hospitalization. A millipede's mode of defense is to curl up around itself, coiling its body like a cinnamon bun. This posture keeps its legs and undersides safely surrounded by its body armor. Some species even look kind of pretty this way and also resemble those old-fashioned phone cords. But lest you think they're wimps, millipedes also emit chemicals from their sides, including hydrogen cyanide, that will irritate and deter predators. Mating mysteries abound when it comes to these creatures. Millipedes are so discreet that scientists didn't even know how some of them mated until 2020. Long story short, male millipedes have to do some real contortions to get their sperm transferred to a female's genital opening. Once that's accomplished, 
Her eggs are fertilized and sealed inside until she's ready to lay them in moist soil. The young will start out with only a few pairs of legs and will add more with each molt of their exoskeletons. Like their lobster cousins, they'll eat their discarded exoskeletons for the nutrients. Rather than mate directly, a centipede female avails herself of a male's spermatophore, which is a capsule containing sperm and nutritious materials. She lays her eggs in a damp area, curling around them to keep them safe.